Hello, welcome to the latest edition of Mike Check uh, here on Start Your Day. We're talking pot and politics. So get ready for that. Joining me uh, this morning, we got uh, Jaha Howard, of course. Uh, he is our political strategist. And uh, Michael Sterling, he is a lawyer and former federal prosecutor. Good morning to you, fellas. Uh, Y'all ready to make this happen, man? Get started because we got a lot to get to. Um, and let's start off with uh, voting rights, which uh, these days actually kind of seems like an oxymoron when it comes to uh, black and brown people because it doesn't seem like we got that many voting rights out there. Uh, the Senate Democrats couldn't get the bills done, uh, thanks in part to uh, Kirsten Sinema and, of course, uh, Joe Manchin not helping when it comes to the filibuster. So, Jaha, let me start off with you. I mean, we're, we're really resilient people. We always seem to try and overcome this struggle, but where do we go from here? Continue making our voices heard and making sure that we run back the receipts. Uh, we all know who got Joe uh, Biden into the White House. And we have to make sure that we retell that accurate history. So when it's time for voting rights to come up like it was recently, we have to tell the truth. He's about six months too late. You know, after the American Rescue Act and we kind of got checks to American people, folks are moving forward, things are looking pretty good in the summer, that's when you have the momentum. That's when you do Voting Rights Act. Instead of that, we went to Build Back Better, massive plan, and then we allowed two senators to drag that thing down into the mud to a screeching halt. And then in a latch ditch effort, okay, now let's try Voting, Act, Voting Rights Act. It doesn't work that way. So it just as fast as the presidency ascended and then we started to see this downward turn, I think we can see uh, Joe Biden turn the corner again when he plays his cards right. I, I get, let, let me play devil's advocate, Mike. I'm going to throw you in here real quick because I, I hear what you're saying and maybe he should have uh, brought this to the table a lot sooner. A lot of black African-Americans are basically saying he should have brought it to the table a lot sooner uh, and forgetting about the whole infrastructure thing. This is uh, more important right now. He's saying... That was because of COVID, because of time and other things were up or whatnot. Do you think, Mike, you think if he would have brought this to the table sooner, that it would have been any different? You think that uh, Joe Manchin or Kristen Sinema at that time would have changed their stance? Do you think any Republicans would have gotten on board if he would have changed, if he would have done this any sooner? Yeah, I think perhaps, uh, Mike, I think if he would have if he would have leveraged other bills uh, and realized that voting rights was the most important issue uh, in February of last year, right after uh, President Biden was elected, I did a roundtable at uh, Texas Southern University where I was asked a series of questions about the new presidency. And they asked me what was the number one issue. And I said voting rights because it is the entire ball game. You don't get Raphael mm -hmm. Warnock and John Ossoff in Georgia elected and the Senate majority without voting rights, which is why you saw immediately after they were elected, you saw the state house in Georgia start doing things to make it more difficult for voters, start restricting uh, how you can vote absentee, restricting uh, access to ballot boxes and drop boxes, uh, restricting the times in which people can vote, not distinguishing between urban and rural communities who vote very differently. So what you saw immediately was the attack on voting rights. And if he had recognized right then, Mike, that voting rights mm -hmm. are under attack because of the enormous win and understood from the very beginning, I'm not doing anything else until you pass voting rights. He could have used that as leverage to get Kristen Sinema and uh, Joe Manchin mm. on board. But I think the failure to understand that that was the most critical issue is why we are where we are uh, with this attack on voting rights and with the inability to get something passed on a federal level. Yeah, you're right about that, because a lot of the, uh, the uh, progressives uh, on, on the left uh, basically said they 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 didn't they wanted to have a dual bill when it came to build back better uh and the infrastructure and they wanted to separate it and see what happens there because they lost the leverage on that as well um but then again he also brought up that the last time this was up uh, 16 republicans were for voting rights and they're nowhere to be found right now uh mainly because of the big lie because they want to keep their job uh, but it might be just how they see us, fellas. Listen to, and I know you heard it already, Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, McConnell what he had to say about African-American voters. Well, the concern is misplaced because if you look at the statistics, African-American voters are voting in just as high a percentage as Americans. <laughs> Jaha, that's just the how they see us. Out loud, I mean, right? I, I thought... 
African Americans aren't uh, uh, aren't we Americans too? I mean, I, I, I thought so. Didn't we build this country? What do you think? You, you know, so we all know um, that there is a there are a lot of people in this country who just have some issue with uh, how they recognize uh, black people as citizens. We know that. We know that we have this uh, otherisms going on. So we we know that. But when it comes to getting the work done. A lot of the Republicans are not going to do the right thing because they really believe in it. They're going to do it because they feel like they have to. And that's why we keep talking about leverage. And, and my buddy Michael over here is, is nailing it right on the head. When you have the wind at your back, mm -hmm. that's when you strike and do the thing that half of the uh, legislature doesn't want to do because they kind of have to because of leverage. We waited until we were just beat down after Build Back Better and then, oh yeah, hold on, let me go ahead and come down to these HBCUs and, and do a big speech. Mm -hmm. But we can't change the past. I guess my point is now is the time to use that bully pulpit. You know, let's go ahead. We need to go state by state, get in there, make the speeches. He's been stuck in Washington trying to work behind the scenes. Now it's time to leverage the American people. And guess what, half of the country and, you know, the polls aren't looking too good when it comes to how they feel about uh, President Biden. So he has to do the work to get that credibility back and then use it for more than one thing, voting rights and those important pieces for Build Back Better. We need to do that right now. Mike, we got about 30 every, seconds, every, man. You think that's going to make a difference? That bull, that uh, using the, the bully pulpit, the executive orders, will it make a difference to energize the base before the midterm? I think I think perhaps it can uh, if it's done effectively. Uh, you know, he, he's got to do more of it. I mean, it's the same strategy uh, President Obama used on, on health care when he wanted to get the health care passed, the same strategy John F. Kennedy used. Uh, and so it's, it's not it's not a new strategy that you go and you appeal to the public to appeal to their representatives, their senators. Uh, you know, you see now, uh, you know, uh, many individuals signing on to letters, you know, like Coach Saban signing on to letters trying to get Joe Manchin, you mm -hmm. know, to change his position. So, you know, when you appeal to the public uh, and they can appeal directly to their representatives, that, that, can, that can perhaps be effective, Mike. All right, we'll see what happens there. I don't know if it's going to change their mind because... Uh... Yeah, it's just, it may be a little too late, too soon, uh, too little, too soon. All right, we got to take a break, but when we come back, we're going to, well, as they say, wake and bake. Uh, up next, we'll introduce you to the uh, blunt-smoking Louisiana lawmaker uh, running for a seat in the Senate. He's got a lot more in his campaign, but we're going to talk about the ad that has been heard across the nation and not just in the state of Louisiana. Mike check more of it coming up after the break are four times more likely to be arrested for marijuana laws than white people. States waste $3.7 billion enforcing marijuana laws every year. Most of the people police are arresting aren't dealers, but rather people with small amounts of pot, just like me. I'm Gary Chambers, and I'm running for the U.S. Senate, and I approve this message. When I tell you I love that ad, I love that ad. Welcome back to Mike Check. You just saw the ad. That's Louisiana Senate candidate Gary Chambers. My man smoking a blunt in his campaign ad. He did that to make a point about unequal cannabis laws. And Mr. Michael Sterling, I've got to start off with you, brother, because uh, you ran a campaign. You ran for mayor of Atlanta a couple of years ago. Um, just wondering what you think overall about uh, his approach, because it's getting a lot of attention. Yeah, well, first of all, Mike, he's smoking a backwood, and that's not something you can fake. That's not performative. <laughs> <laughs> you can't fake that. So, uh, nope. so, 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 you know, the, the ad certainly got a lot of attention, and I think he, I think he, he got his message across. So even if he knows that he's running an uphill campaign, he's got a he's got a specific issue that he wants to address, and I think what what you're seeing is his message getting out in a way that's viral, in a way that's meaningful, uh, in a way that grabs everybody's attention. And so now that he's got everybody's attention, the question is, what do you do next? How do you how do you take that attention and make it into something meaningful, into some action for what you for what you want to get accomplished? So I, I like the ad. Uh, I think it's I think, you know, it accomplished its goal. Uh, of getting everybody's attention now it's just you know what does he do with it what is what happens next where do you go from here because he, he has my attention he has everybody's attention 
Jaha, everybody's decision, not just black people, because black people aren't the only ones that smoke weed. White people smoke a lot of weed. As a matter of fact, white people smoke more, more weed than us. This could have grabbed white people in Louisiana as well, their attention. And more importantly, like you said, everybody knows who Gary Chambers is right now. So that means Man, his campaign he, could be flooded he, with campaign funds as well. He did the thing that candidates hope to do all over the country. How do you make a few thousands of dollars turn into the power of millions of dollars? Uh, campaigns sometimes mm -hmm. have the best message, the best product, but they don't have the money to push behind it. And they're depending on special interests to kind of give the money so that can be relevant. In the, in the seemingly blink of an eye, he has become relevant. We're going to know Gary Chambers Jr. out of Baton Rouge because of this ad. And so, yes, he has to leverage what's going on, but he just went straight Master P, bout it, bout it, let me do this to the music industry. So now it's just about the next moves. But he did something that folks dream of doing, flipping a few thousand dollars to doing the power of millions of dollars. I mean, he's basically the Popeye's chicken sandwich of politics right now. So, <laughs> I, I mean, he... He, he accomplished that. I mean, I'm thoroughly impressed. Not only did he get just views, but he has people talking about a very important issue. Now folks are looking back at the Louisiana State Legislature, what the governor has been doing about uh, just, and even in Baton Rouge, how they're trying to make some changes uh, to make the laws less, uh, uh, less punitive. But there's still so much work to be done. Mm -hmm. And then having that follow-up conversation yeah. about who's making money off this legalized marijuana. He's doing something that we dream of in politics. So I'm just really proud of this brother. He's showing that that creativity. It's not just about money, but you, hey, he made it happen with a little bit. And, and you know what you just did? You brought up Popeye's chicken. So people that really like this ad, that really partake in this ad, they thinking about Popeye's chicken right now. They thinking about a snack. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you see the morning. connection. Uh, you see the connection. Yeah, I, I, I see mean, what you did there, the Popeye's well, chicken. How do we, we're uh, talking about food somehow. I mean, how, how does that happen? It's some, some, <laughs> some kind of snack. Yeah, absolutely. It just, it, from, what I, from what I hear, it does make you hungry. I'm seeing a partnership uh, but, you know, here. Overall, I'm seeing a partnership I mean, here. Yeah, it, 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 get on board. The, the Frito Lays, <laughs> all kind of chips, all kind of <laughs> whatever, whatever it takes, man. But it makes your mouth dry, um, from what I understand. Uh, <laughs> Uh, when it comes, though, to, to the legalization, he makes a good point when it comes to uh, how disproportionate it is when it comes to the arrest of black people compared to white people. And even though white people, as I made the point before, smoke just as much weed. So that's what I, he, he needs to be running on as well. Is it time now, Mike, that more states, I think we got about 36 states that legalize weed, whether for medicinal or for recreational purposes, is it now for states across the nation to go ahead and just legalize weed across the board? Yeah, absolutely. It's time, time for the federal government to do the same so that you can actually, you know, you don't have to go through these vast amounts of uh, issues in terms of how they, how they uh, uh, are able to, to use the banking system, for example, uh, through, uh, mm -hmm. through the states that have legalized it. So it's time for the federal government to fully legalize it. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're far, far beyond this issue. I, I don't understand why there hasn't been. I know Cory Booker, Senator Booker has proposed legislation and he's tried to work on a bipartisan level to get this passed at the federal, uh, you know, uh, federal legislation passed. It, it, it's, it's far, far beyond time for us to get this done. Uh, we should not be, you know, illegal. You've got an opioid crisis where pharmaceutical companies mm -hmm. have pushed, you know, uh, opioids on, on people, pharmacies and doctors pushed opioids on people. We've got a big opioid crisis. Those drugs are legal. I can go get hydrocodone. I can get, uh, you know, uh, the, these painkillers uh, that are highly addictive, but, you know, somehow I can't, you know, a, a, a kid in Georgia gets arrested for a small amount of, of marijuana. And I've, I've defended these cases. In yeah. fact, I defended a district attorney yeah. who was prosecuted because he didn't want to prosecute weed cases. Uh, you know, uh, Chris wow. Butler is serving... 30 years in Georgia for four pounds of marijuana, uh, but I can walk into dispensaries in California and Colorado and Washington and buy drug and, and buy weed from, from folks, you know, and I know, a, I know a guy in Mississippi who's doing 30 years in jail for four pounds of marijuana. It's just, I mean, it's ridiculous. Some, These uneven, inequitable amazing. laws have really, really harmed uh, disproportionately the African-American community. That's Fellas, I got to wrap it up. Uh, great stuff right there.
It is. It is. It is the power. We, it, it needs to be de decri decriminalized across the board, across the nation, even if it's not legalized for recreational purposes. And if Republicans can do ads uh, with their family holding guns, then why can't he hold something that actually gives out shotguns? Some of y'all know what I'm talking point. about when I'm talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> Jaha Howard, Michael Sterling, another edition of Mike Check. Fellas, have a great weekend. We'll see you again next week, man. Hey, appreciate you. All right, thanks, Mike.